in a land where serenity can switch to tempest in a matter of hours. Where dangers lurk around every corner. Where strength, resolve and equipment are pushed to breaking point, And rugged terrain gives way to unpredictable conditions. Teams of two, both pro and amateur, race each other for a spot on the world's most prestigious mountain bike stage race podium. It's untamed. It's relentless. It's unparalleled. This is the Absa Cape Epic. The 2019 edition of the race starts once again with a handlebar-wrenching prologue in Cape Town, ahead of seven grueling stages through South Africa's Western Cape. Teams move on to the seaside town of Amanas, and then wrestle their way through rutted and loose technical trails to Oak Valley Wine Estate. Then it's on to Stellenbosch, one of the mountain biking meccas of the world, before racing to the finish line at Val de Vie and bringing 650 arduous kilometers and over 16,500 meters of climbing to an end. Who would have the legs, the tenacity, and the proven partnership to raise the women's trophy this year? The prologue is an all-out time trial race against the clock on the slopes of Table Mountain. Many of the women's elite teams would complete it in under an hour. Though it may be short, the course is the first real opportunity for riders to test their teamwork and their form. The first unexpected surprise was the weather. Many had prepared for heat and dust. Could this upset team tactics? Unexpected wind and unexpected uh, layers of cloud, eh? <laughs> to me it's good. I'm coming from the snow, so I'm happy with this. <laughs> Germany's Sabine Schwitz, an Olympic gold medalist and three-time Absa Cape epic finisher, had teamed up with Nadine Reeder, fresh off winning the final round of the highly competitive international MTB Bundesliga to form Mirandel via Wies Rothwil. American Sonia Looney paired up with Catherine Williamson, a former Absa Cape Epic winner. It looked like their team orders were just to have fun. Yeah, that was good fun. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, <laughs> no, I'm gonna become part American. <laughs> the team from Summit Finn, German Adelaide Mora and South African Candice Lill had the early lead at the first split. Lil, who was the 2018 Absa Cape Epic Africa jersey winner and multiple Olympian Morath, had already proven their partnership by winning the 2018 Wines to Wales. The pair looked outclassed, however, by fellow South African Amy McDougall on the technical descents. She and partner Sam Sanders clearly had their eye on the coveted Women's Africa leader jersey, even at this early stage in the race. They would have to fight Team Galileo Risk for it. The all-South African pair of Teresa Rolf was already finished seven Absa Cape epics, and newbie Sarah Hill would cross the line in fourth place overall. Today couldn't have actually gone better for Teresa and I. Everything lined up perfectly. But an infraction on course by the pair, sitting on the wheel of Summit Finn, carried the heavy price of a 30-minute penalty, pushing them far further down the general classification after the prologue. With their eyes firmly fixed on the podium, the heavily experienced silverback Fair Tree team of former South African national cross-country champion Mariska Strauss and Swedish national marathon champion Jenny Steenhog were coming in with the knowledge that they'd already beaten a tough field to win the Tankwa trick. The new pairing of multiple Absa Cape epic winner Ariane Luti and cross-country world champion Maya Wyszkowska in the colors of crossbow racing brought a force to be reckoned with to the Absa Cape epic. Luti has won the race three times in the mixed category and twice in the UCI women's category, while Wojtkowska is an Olympic silver medalist. In the end, the day belonged to the favorites. Team Investec Songo specialized. The four-time Absa Cape Epic women's category winner, Annika Langfell, this year partnered with road racing sensation, Anna van der Bregen, a multiple Olympic medalist and world champion. Langfell is largely regarded as the most complete mountain biker, having won the world championships in both cross country and marathon. She was looking to add to her perfect winning streak at the Absa Cape Epic by making 2019 her fifth victory in a row. But as a full-time road racer, would Van der Bregen's technical mountain biking skills be sharp enough to see the team to victory? It was probably one of the, the fastest and hardest prologue I've ever done at the Cape Epic and a really good start. It's only the first day and we, we did go quite hard today so it could be different from tomorrow on but definitely a good start is, uh, it feels good. Stage 1. Each year, 
without exception, it's a shock to the system. Every stage of the epic is hard and it obviously depends on the race also, how hard everyone goes. And yeah, it's going to be a hard day. Uh, I must say I feel quite nervous for it, but also excited to, yeah, to have a long stage. Probably it will be the longest ride on my mountain bike, so... Um... With years of experience, Mirandel via Wiesrothwild's Sabine Spitz eagerly came to the fore to set the pace. Spitz, a former world champion and Olympic medalist, is no stranger to unplanned surprises on the Apsa Cape Epic, as a former partner Robin de Groot can attest to. 2017 was, a, if we were having a bad day, it was a really bad day, and if we were having a good day, it was a stage win, so it was like a really an emotional roller coaster. Obviously, it's been a bad crash where she went down a canyon. Yeah, and obviously the handlebar crash just topped it. I mean, you just can't believe it when you see it, you know? This first stage sees riders out for many hours. At the 60 to 70 kilometer mark, the rate of attrition really takes hold. Would Investec Songo Specialize ride defensively in the first part of the race and cover off the attacks? The UCI women's field didn't have to wait very long to get the answer to that question, as the leaders in the orange jersey turned up the pace, ascending into the Hirmel and Arta Valley. First to drop off were Looney and Williamson of Team Freak Show Scott. The energy sapping terrain played into Van der Bregen and Langfall's strengths, as with power to burn, they rapidly opened up a two-minute lead and later took the Dimension Data hotspot. But a chase group had formed which included Crossbow Racing, Summitfin, Silverback Fairtree, and the distinctly white jerseys of Spitz and Rieder. When Morath of Summit Finn turned up the pursuit, Rieder and Spitz simply could not hold on. With Summit Finn riding straight through the water point, and Washkovska of Crossbow stopping to stuff her pockets with gels, were tactics also at play in the chase group? Or was the Polish cross-country world champion just being overly cautious? Uh, you know, you need a lot of energy for five hours of racing, uh, but uh, remember that you have to take those dusts to the finish. Summit Finn could not make the attack at the water point stick, and Luty and Wyszkowska caught and passed the Lil and Morath. The Swiss-Polish combination then got down to business. They needed to extend their advantage over the women in third, and hunt down team Investec Songo specialized. In the technical terrain up ahead, Anna van der Bregen was undeniably proving herself. But with a small gap of just over three minutes, making a small error just trying to keep up with the technically more proficient Annika Langfell, but see Luti and Wachkowska catch them. Unpredictability at the Absa Cape Epic comes in many forms. In an uncharacteristic lapse in concentration, it's Langfell who almost makes a disastrous error taking a wrong turn. Fortunately, the team lose little time and cross yet again, victorious. We just try to pace ourselves and we're both looking to each other like, wow, uh, like this is really tough that we go out too hard. But then I think we, we found a decent pace. Uh, yeah, that we could hold to the finish line. Silverback Fairtree make it home in fourth after a brutal stage with Strauss feeling unwell, but still helped by a limping Stina Hogg, who was nursing injuries from a crash. Yeah, it was a, quite a deep cut in my elbows. I needed two stitches and then my hip is a bit swollen still. With stage one behind them, Investec Songo Specialized had opened up almost six minutes on rivals cross spur, with Summit Finn in hot pursuit. Overnight in Hermanus, the rumors had begun making their rounds. Was Annika Langfell suffering from a stomach virus? Had Amy McDougall of Dormacaba, and still wearing the Africa leader's jersey, actually recovered fully from the illness she had before the race started in Cape Town? Speculation soon gave way to the harsh reality of the tough terrain that lay ahead. The brutally steep rocky climb before the Land Rover technical terrain called the machine forced the UCI women to get off their bikes. On the other side, the treacherous descent gave crossbow racing the chance they needed to put pressure on Investec Songo Specialized. Luti and Wyszkowska were hoping to prey on the inexperience of Van der Bregen and force a mistake. Further back in the field, 
Summit Finn had settled into protecting their third place. And Jenny Steenerhag, a body clearly affected by the crash yesterday, was helped along by partner Mariska Strauss. If Langfall had been ill overnight, she certainly had played a masterful tactical game to not let it slow her down. She turned it up a gear when it counted, and together with Van der Bregen, Investec Songo Specialize broke away to claim yet another top step of the podium. Anna and Annika, obviously road racers and tactically really smart. They, they let us do the work on the flat section. They, they don't want to kill themselves. They also know it's a long race, so uh, they're just being tactically really smart and only put their energy there where they need to. Even with pressure on Investec Songo Specialized, Luti and Washkovska lost two minutes on the leaders. They were still in contention. It's going to be up to partnerships, it's going to be up to the terrain and, of course, a bit of luck. The new race village in Oak Valley Wine Estate is at the epicenter of a famed network of pristine mountain biking trails. But the joy of ribbons of single track wouldn't be complete without the Emerald Princess, the iconic climb up the Rundenberg. All the UCI women were together early on. Investec Songo Specialized was sitting in the bunch and letting others set the pace while heading up to the Dimension Data Hotspot. Amy McDougall did not look in great shape. Team Dorma Kaba was still wearing the Africa leader's jersey. But if it was true that McDougall wasn't quite yet 100% healthy, this could mar their chances of retaining it. But there was cause for concern for every rider on the rugged terrain which formed the dramatic backdrop of a wildfire-ravaged Grunenberg. Out here, anything can happen, and often does. So after the hot spot on the downhill, I flat it. So then we fix it quite quickly, but we thought it's safer to, to change the wheel because the tech zone came pretty uh, soon after. But we didn't notice that our guys, which we shared the wheels with, also had a flat. Uh, but later on, it, it lost air and yeah, so we actually had to fix the guy's problem. This unplanned twist in the tail for crossbow racing caused them a near insurmountable deficit behind the leaders months and months and months go into planning for an event like this. It's definitely not something that, that gets pulled together um, in a month or, or two even. Um, it's something that takes meticulous planning from a whole host of people. Summit Finns Lil and Mora were now calmly settling into second place. Silverback Fairtree were lying in third, though it was clear that Stina Hogg needed rest and recovery from her injuries. It was so rocky and sandy and I'm so tired in my arms and back from all the bumpy stuff. Um, yeah, so we, we rode conservatively and it really paid off. I tried to save energy because I felt in the stages before the end is hard for me because it's longer than my normally road racing. Cross Spur Racing's disastrous day saw them as the big losers, dropping a place in the overall to third behind Investec Songo Specialized and Summit Finn. This was time trial day. Teams raced against the clock in reverse starting order, with the highest placed team in the general classification starting last. After three consecutive marathon stages, the 43 kilometer distance of stage four's route was relatively short. Who of the UCI women's teams would push the limit in search of a prestigious podium victory? And who would temper their efforts in the knowledge that the behemoth queen stage loomed ahead? Stage 4's route took in much of Oak Valley and Paul Kluver's fast and flowing single tracks, linking them together with sharp climbs. Summit Finn's Adelaide Morath and Candice Lill were all too familiar with these trails, having ridden them to victory in the 2018 Wines to Wales stage race. Yeah, every day we try to do our best. Uh, so today it's a more shorter day and yeah, yesterday it was a quite hard stage, so we will look what the legs have left. It was Crossbow Racing who got to sit in the hot seat first though, posting a scorchingly fast and uncontested time around the course. But they would need to wait for all the other teams, like Galileo Risk who were now into the Africa leader's jersey to cross the line before beginning any celebrations. Very fun. I must admit, I had to look up twice and to go, oh, that is Sarah, because we're so used to seeing blue. Yeah. Langfell and Van der Bregen looked to be on track for another flawless victory. But expectations between the pair did not seem matched during the stage, with Van der Bregen looking unhappy. 
it's not a good day for you to ask. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is. It is always difficult, uh, challenging to to form a new partnership because you really have to write this kind of yourself how to say like into the partnership. And then suddenly, Langfell was off the trail and buried in the bushes. But even a crash couldn't stop Investec Songo Specialized. With a large enough buffer to ensure they came home first, the only trouble looked to be between the teammates. Yeah, we didn't want to. <laughs> we didn't stick to the plan. Sorry. A great day for Galileo Risk, as they wore the Africa leader's jersey for the first time clawing themselves back into the racing after their bad luck on the prologue. The 2019 Absa Cape Epic Queen stage. A very hot day, very steep climbing, lots of off camber, technical descents. Not to mention that the riders had many arduous kilometers in their legs. And just to mix it up even more, a compulsory portage section down the historic wagon trail a path not at all suited to mountain bike shoes. But the reward of the Hildeberg single track and the famed G-spot would bring them home to Stellenbosch. Today we have a proper stage ahead of us. We are sitting quite comfortable in the overall GC, so we can keep it safe until the finish line. It's, it's looking quite good already, so yeah, steady does it. If there was ever a day to demonstrate how tough the women at the Absa Cape Epic truly are, it was today. The UCI women's elite would be out in the sweltering conditions nearly an hour and a half longer than the men. It's so equal, like we do the same races as the men do. We have the same prize money. We have the same things in everything. Like in the book, it's men and women equal. I'm, I'm not used to that in road cycling. Summit Finn placed consistent and relentless pressure on Investec Songo Specialized forcing errors from the leading team. This even led to an uncharacteristic mechanical from the orange jersey wearers. Check the pressure in that wheel, if it's good. Is it what you like it to be? So now just nice and steady and we will catch Cape Epic is a very special race because it takes a massive setup. To, to be competitive in this race. It takes a huge team around you and for more women's team to come here and become competitive means that there must be more like bigger teams with a lot of women on it. And that's kind of the problem at the moment. Having worked especially hard to form their team and get themselves to the Absa Cape Epic, a victory for Summit Finn on stage five wouldn't only see them surge ahead of crossbow racing in general classification, it would taste so much sweeter. Candice Lill and Adelaide Morath had literally set the Queen stage alight, breaking the dominance of Investec Songo Specialized. Phew, it was very hard. Um, yeah, those little bumps on the profile never really ended. Um, there wasn't any particular long climb besides the King's climb, um, but it was just non-stop climbing, descending, climbing, descending. Silverback Fairtree were clawing back time to cross spur racing in third. But even on the home stretch, the unpredictability of the Absa Cape Epic leaves no one unscathed. This time, taking a solid bite out of Mariska Strauss. A truly epic day for Lil and Morath saw them cement their overall second position. But with two days of racing to go, anything could still happen. Anna van der Breggen admitting that she had endured possibly the worst day on a bike ever yesterday. Investec Songo Specialized appeared to want to erase that from the memory banks. So they went on the attack early. Summit Finns Lil and Morat instead looked to be content to ride conservatively, maintaining their gap to third. And with lots of clean track ahead of them and very little interference, they could tap out a steady rhythm to the finish. Crossbow Racing were also finally having a better day. The fire still burning hot in them, they continued to chase hard, knowing that there was still a gap that could be closed. 
morale, the only thing you have control over in the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, yesterday we had quite a few mental challenges to overcome, especially yeah, with the illness and then also the puncture. And today we were much more switched on. With a huge 30-minute gap over the second-place team, Investec Songo specialised had this one firmly sewn up. After the first big climb of the day, it was only Summit Finn who were able to stick with the orange leader jersey wearers through the fun single track of Boschendal and onto the trails of Val de Vie and the finale. It had the makings of a sprint finish. Behind the Summit Finn pair, Investec Songo Specialized were looking for the tactical advantage. When they launched their attack, Candace Lil and Adelaide Morath simply could not match the power and tactical mastery of Van der Bregen. The crossbow racing team of Ariane Luti and Maya Wyszkowska, who received arguably the lion's share of bad luck during this year's race, finished third in high spirits, and clearly as the crowd favorites. But the week of racing belonged firmly to Investec Songo Specialized. A perfect record for Annika Langfell. She's entered five Absa Cape Epics. She's won five consecutively. And for Anna van der Bregen, a win as a newbie in the race. The team commanded the race, raising the women's trophy as undisputed winners of the Absa Cape Epic. This is my fifth uh, Cape Epic win, and it's quite special. I mean, <laughs> every single time it's just so hard. Uh, it's definitely never a walking in the park. Um, yeah, so much suffering out there, so much focus, so much concentration for eight days. It really takes a lot of you. Um, I'm very proud to, to be able to, to pull this one off, and yeah, also very proud that uh, Anna wanted to, to join me for this adventure. Uh, yeah, without her, it wasn't possible. So yeah, it's been a, a good week. Ah, it's a strange feeling to to win the Cape Epic. I mean, I, everybody knows the stage race, and it's uh, I know how painful it was. So every time I look to the trophy, I will, yeah, it will remind me of this week with Annika and uh, and with the team. Um, and in the end, you know, you don't feel. You don't remember the pain anymore. It's only, I think, the good memories of this week, and, and I have a lot of good memories from it. Sure, we've had a great week together. Um, yeah, today we actually rode really well. We had good legs up in compared to yesterday. So, yeah, we tried to take it to the specialized girls, but yeah, they have more power in the sprint than us. Uh, so, yeah, we had to settle for second place, but extremely happy with how the week went. Um, yeah, to finish second overall in such a quality field. I think we did a great job together. Yeah, it's uh, super hard and every day it's like you never know what you get and how you feel, how your legs are, how the route is. And so the yeah, the race it's super tough and that's also why it makes really emotional sometimes. Yeah, no, I'm I'm super super happy. The the girls were racing really amazing. Uh, I mean, almost all the riders in front of me were once riding with me a race, so <laughs> I, I, you know, I know them personally very well, and I really, they really deserve to, to stand in front of me. Uh, they rode extremely well, and to be third here at the Epic is, is amazing. Uh, it's wonderful. It's absolutely great to, to be here, to finish the Epic, finish it on the podium with so many adventures we had, like three flat tires, me being sick. Like it's, it's just amazing that we still can be on the podium. It may have been the shortest route in Absa Cape epic history, but it was the toughest. More climbing than ever before, unforgiving terrain, and relentless competition. All those who finished it have become the stuff of mountain biking legend. This is the untamed mountain bike race.